afternoon, you wonderful people. Thank you so much if you tuned in to my video from last week. If this video gets a bit too much information for you, I recommend you to skip a little bit if you don't want to know the ins and the outs because I'm going to be talking a lot about the t TMI bits. Hi Mimi, how are we doing today? Just to say, hi guys, welcome to our second vlog. I know at certain points of my period cycle, there are days that I need to be by a bathroom pretty much the whole day. You have more movements going on in your tummy. Um, I don't know if that's for you or it's my odd stomach. Let me know. I would like to know this information if everybody gets the same kind of... So whenever I go out and eat in a restaurant and you don't know obviously all the products that you're using, I had the most basic thing on the menu which is what I normally always do, which is a piece of toast, gluten-free toast, avocado, tomatoes, rocket and some balsamic vinegar. That is all that is supposed to be in the meal. However, my stomach yesterday didn't agree with whatever I ate. And girls, when we're on our periods and we are not agreeing with certain foods, I don't know what I ate that I could have upset my stomach that much, but I had to go to the bathroom quite a lot yesterday and it wasn't very nice. In the night, just before going to bed, I noticed that my stomach was hurting more, my right ovary was um, in a lot of pain. It's like it was throbbing again, it was doing that <laughs> really annoying. I, it was about 10.30 when we went to bed and I could not go to sleep, I was in so much pain. So I know that what used to help me, and I completely forgot about it, so another tip now that I am saying, but if that could help your stomach issues and also any menstrual cramps, is chamomile tea i know weird and they used to give it to me at school whenever you would go to the nurse like i feel sick that's what i had and i sat outside on my sofa just to like calm down my stomach and it worked within an hour i think i went back to bed around at 12 um my stomach wasn't hurting anymore so that's another tip for you is chamomile tea this morning i got up at 6 a.m which i am not used to doing at the moment. The sun was shining, it was a happy clear day. So we decided to go paddleboarding. It was so much fun and I found that paddleboarding is really like calms me down. I think it's so nice that like, you're on the water and you can like hear the water. I noticed my stomach was hurting and bloated and still you know feeling that period pain still on day eight. Oh, it's like the longest period ever for me. I woke up this morning and I had no period and last night I also had no period. So I thought, oh my God, my period's over, yay. But no, after my body had woken up and everything was moving a little bit, my period came back. Another tip is a good swim. I don't know, I like just going in the sea. I feel like it soothes my body and it soothes my stomach so much. If you go swimming, I know that I live in a hot country, maybe other people don't, and it's not available right now for you to be able to go for a swim. Or even take a hot bath. That's also a nice one. To soothe your stomach cramps, your period cramps. Another taboo subject is our gut health, which I'm also going to be looking into and trying to give out tips and trying to heal my gut as well. So that will also be another video. Now because I've got a period, I'm using more tampons and I'm getting cystitis all the time. Carefree cotton pads at home, I use these. When I'm going to bed, I use these. They're also unscented but sometimes they give me thrush. So what I've gone and got, because a couple of friends have told me that they got it here from the organic shop, shop I got the cup. The cup. When I was in America and I saw them, I was like, hell no, they're huge, they ain't going in there. Never used one before. So I've been doing so much research for the past week on them and obviously wanting to become more sustainable. Oh, it comes with a little bag. This is the cup. It was quite small. I know you can cut these, and I always thought it was a filter for some reason and I didn't understand why. It's really soft. This is what I'm worried about a little bit here is the thickness of it. So this is a small one. 
I'll let you know how I get on with this. I'm gonna go put it in and see if I feel it. Actually, I'm really nervous. So I found a brand, looked really good, and I did the test, like I did a test to find out which cup would work for me. However, they're not here in Dubai, and to be able to get it here is gonna be really expensive. Try and order it in the next couple of weeks and see if somebody is able to bring it out from the UK. It was called Salt. Really nervous about, because the tampon is ridiculous. So how would I be able to get a regular in there? And Wish me luck. Cut off a little bit of the end. Now I'm just boiling it for, it says four to seven minutes. This thing is so strange. I'm completely honest here. Of putting a cup in for the first time. Yeah, it was painful. <laughs> so, it, but I think it's a thing that you've got to get used to. And because I'm nervous about it, I think my, I'm like tense and immediately I took it out. I was scared. So I put it in by making a U shape like that. Insert it in and then it sucks and this acts like a suction. So when I was trying to take it out, that is what I found quite painful if I'm on. I'll try again later. I used the cup. Yay! I did it. A bit painful when it goes in and then once it pops open, that's okay. And I didn't feel anything. After that, I was fine. Granted, I could still kind of feel this bit, so I didn't... I don't think I got it in. She thinks it's a toy. Overall, quite happy with it. Wasn't that heavy for a few hours, so that's good. To take it out, again, I was myself to take it out. What I've been told, and I just did some research on it, you have to get the air out. So when you're going to kind of find it, try find the base as much as you can before pulling and squeeze. That's what I've been told. If anybody has any advice for how for it not to be painful, I mean, kind of painful up there. I got nails, huh? Like, it took a bit of pulling and suction and it feels a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, you have to use the muscles down there to help contract it out. So make sure you know what that is, the Kegel exercise where you're tensing. You feel like you're pulling up something and then let it out. I didn't have any leakage. It's the best way to start your day is lemon water. It helps with detoxifying, it helps neutralizes your hormones for the day and your sugars. So, woke up today, no period. I think it's gone. Let's give it a bit of time because I did just do a workout and it tends to start moving around when I've done my workout. It is 12 o'clock now, so I will tell you about my morning. Got up around 7.30 and I came out and I had two cups of warm lemon water. This cup is absolutely mahoosive. Um, but I make sure that it is full all day, every day, so that I know that I'm staying hydrated throughout the day. If I don't stay hydrated enough, this really affects me and all my women's problems. I get cystitis. Also helps with the bloating. I, I still feel a bit ugh, and I still feel the pain in my right ovary and in my lower back. You know that feeling before you get your period and you're like, oh, my back hurts, ah. Yeah, it's that. I've done quite a big workout today. I did a 45 minute hit session, then I did a half an hour like activation of glutes. I'm pretty pumped today. I had a lot of energy when I woke up because I'm super excited because I am uploading the first video today. I'm just gonna explain some of my mor morning routines. So this week I'll do a bit more about the foods that I eat and the superfoods that I eat to help control my hormones like that and what I've been told will help throughout this time of coming off of contraception. Another thing that I have taken up is celery juice in the morning. I prefer not to do a workout on a stomach with food in because I do have a tendency of throwing stuff back up. Sometimes if I drink coffee and do a HIIT workout I get indigestion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a smoothie the, for my breakfast, but a smoothie that's got components in to help balance out hormones. I'm gonna do it in my Nutri Bullet. Put water or your milk in first, because if you put the fruits first in and all of that, it's all gonna be stuck at the bottom and then you've gotta do this and it's just annoying. Just a bit. I'm gonna 
use half a banana because it will keep me full, fuller for longer. So what I'm going to do is put, this is like a quarter of a banana, this is really small. Blueberries. Wow, that was a fail. <laughs> so I freeze them. So instead of using the fresh ones, I might keep them for like a bowl later. And so blueberries are a great source of antioxidants. They're great to prevent urinary tract infections. I've got my blueberries stuck in my throat. Oh, I take a probiotic, and this one has 50 billion life cultures for my stomach and just to go along with today, I take that um, before my celery juice and before my coffee. And then I also take estrosense to help and support um, and promote healthy estrogen balance. Actually, I'm gonna add cinnamon into this. Cinnamon is a great way to balance out your hormones. Um, it's got great properties to it. I also love cinnamon. The vegan protein powder, maca powder, which I have just recently got into more. Um, it tastes a bit caramelly, so it's really nice. Maca powder is amazing. People put it in everything to help balance your hormones and also it's supposed to help with menstrual cramps. It improves libido, which is also amazing, so even men can have this too. And then I'm gonna put chia seeds in it for fiber and all my omega-3s. That's not a quarter, Amelia. Still not a quarter. Then flaxseed meal, which is amazing, also full of good fats, omega-3s. This is great, again, to balance out the hormones, so I put it on everything, even in my salads I put this on. It was great for inflammation, so it's great for gut health too. To make it a little bit creamier, I'm gonna add a little dash of gluten-free oat milk. I used to put a teaspoon of peanut butter in. However, I noticed that peanut butter was giving me acne. And after taking up peanut butter from my diet, I really saw a difference. So it's really sad, but I'll limit my, myself to peanut butter maybe once a week. Like, ooh, day nine, I, my period's ended. It didn't, it was false alarm. However, it's really light. It was ending period color, the brown color, like the dark red or brown color that it is. Today is like bright red, rosy red, lovely, start, like start of the period again. Got pain all down there. I'm not feeling 100% today. Good morning. I have to remember what day it is. It's day 10. Doing more and more research is that women, women's hormones go absolutely mental once we come off the pill. We need to start normalizing and if you have imbalanced hormonal issues like I do, you and if we're trying to do this holistically and not do it with pills, um, you need to do it with your foods and your nutrients. So what I'm gonna be making this morning is celery juice. But there are so many articles and reviews about how celery juice is like the most amazing thing on the planet and how it cures everything. So I know one girl that messaged me a few weeks ago saying that she started it and it's cleared up her acne. And I also was drinking it a lot before lockdown. This, then I'm gonna wait uh, about 45 minutes, as that's recommended, before I have my coffee. I've just done a seriously intense 45 minute hit workout on an Instagram live. Um, with Crank Dubai. I I've mentioned before that my period doesn't tend to come till after I've moved in the morning and get going. So this morning I woke up with a little bit of period. Just like a little bit and you know it's the coloration of when it's over. So hopefully 11 days and it'll be over. I didn't vlog yesterday afternoon because I was just so grumpy. I haven't really googled what symptoms happen and you know what happens when you come off of contraception because I kind of want to know by myself like and know how my body is reacting. Also what I've been doing for the past five days just a 15 minute meditation and it's helped me just kind of visualize what's going on in my body and I know some people well hey 
I know myself, I'm a freaking yoga teacher and I still can't meditate. I find it incredibly difficult, but I've been forcing myself this week to do it. To just notice what's going on in my body throughout this time. Sounds weird, some people might think I'm crazy, but it's okay. You know, we've all got to try these things and I've been reading so much into it how it's been helping women with their issues and being able to connect mind to body. I'm rambling on here and I might sound like a psychopath and I'm just gonna say what I'm doing and maybe it will help other people. Anybody sweat a lot? <laughs> I'm sweating all the time. I know I'm a very sweaty person. This could be due to the hormone. I can't wear gray. I can't wear colors because I sweat a lot. And everyone goes, oh my God, you are so sweaty. In the past two days, my God, I woke up in the night in sweat. It was just like, what is going on? I'm not even hot. And I had a headache from hell. Guys, I don't suffer with migraines. I don't suffer with headaches. Very lucky and I was very pleased that I didn't because now I do. And girls, apparently it's normal for you to feel like this coming off of contraception because your hormones do not know what to do. Sweat seems to be a symptom of coming off of contraception. Moodiness. I'm quite good with my moods to be fair. I kind of just take it all in to myself. You know how I know some girls that are like, oh my God, I'm so moody, I'm on my period, blah, 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 and they snap at everyone. Like, at, sometimes I do. I feel like there is like a claw in the back of my head, but I tend to just kind of leave it to myself. I don't snap at my partner. I don't snap at my family. Oh God, I forgot to mention thrush. Why on earth have I got thrush? I'm not wearing a tampon. I'm barely wearing a pad because I'm not heavy enough. I've just got cotton underwear on. Apparently it's a symptom. What to do? God. You can also be quite emotional. I did cry yesterday. Hmm. Cheers. Basically, coming up with a diet plan for me. It's not a diet to lose weight, it's a diet to control my hormones. I'm not a nutritionist, so I cannot tell you what is gonna help you lose weight or anything like that. I'm literally just going to find a diet plan that works for my body, works for my hormones and my gut. So for three days, I've had my smoothie with blueberries, banana, I showed it to you the other day, and I feel a bit bloated. So what I'm gonna do for the next three days is have a savory breakfast, which is going to include avocados, my good fats. That is I'm trying to see what foods are gonna bloat me, what foods react with me in terms of my tummy issues, if it helps my cramps and stuff like that. So I am gonna be creating like a diet plan for myself in the next few weeks and I'll document it also through the vlogs. One thing that I didn't really mention in my last vlog is about my endometriosis. I don't want to say so much about it because I technically haven't been diagnosed with it. And the only way to be diagnosed is to either have cameras inserted into you or you have an operation. I also want to try heal my body holistically anyway. But whenever I went to the doctor about the causes and when you saw in my last vlog that I was in hospital, I've been in hospital two or three times with the pain. That was the only time I recorded it. That was a few months ago. I wanted to start this channel a few months ago, but I was scared to do it. So I've done it. When I first went to a doctor, um, she said to me because of the severe pains that I have, and the symptoms that I have are all signs of endometriosis. I don't know if you know about what endometriosis is. You might be able to Google it and get a better understanding of it because sometimes I just say things and, you know, basically it's a uterus lining that spreads across the body and it can, and it can attach itself to any other areas of the body. It could be in the stomach, meaning to me that one of her patients has it in her nose and she bleeds from her nose once a month. As the uterus lining goes to different places in your body, it also bleeds. 
so that's why we have so much pain so it could go to other areas of the uterus or go into your fallopian tubes so that could cause more pain i'm not a doctor but this is what i've been told i'm gonna be really intimate and very detailed here so if you don't like the details and you would like to skip it really i don't recommend watching this channel because i'm gonna be very open about this journey so that's a disclaimer i think i have it is in my bum I didn't know this was a symptom, but when I went to my doctor and explained my pains and stuff like that, she was asking me, what other things do you experience when you're on your period or even like a week before? Pulsing pains around my ovary. One period, one month, like, okay. This was when I was on, I think it was Yasmin, the pill. One month, okay. The next month, awful. That I'd be in bed the whole time and I would always have to go home from work. Excuse me, coffee break also what I was explaining to her I said I don't know if this is a symptom when I need to go to the bathroom extremely painful sometimes for me able to pass this is so weird talking about it guys but I'm gonna try and be as natural as I can um, to talk about my toilet problems I remember one time I was literally screaming on the toilet because it was that painful and also I sometimes bleed from my bum. But then she was like, mm, I think it could be there. That's where it could be. And the only way to actually check, a camera up your bum. Ah, that, I'm sweating. I'm sweating because that was very nerve wracking for me to talk about my toilet habits. Another symptom is painful intercourse. Shooting pain or that you feel some, no, I'm not gonna say that because I don't know if I can say it on be painful in certain positions so I know that I was following like two girls that have endo and one girl says she can do one position the other girl says she can't severe cramps is another symptom so if you think that you might have any of these symptoms I really do recommend that you go and talk to your doctor just about it to get some advice just one thing is I'm trying to be really holistic and natural so if they suggest like I was roped into this I'm gonna put you on a pill that doesn't let you have a period. No, don't do it. Let's like try and naturally heal your body. Like you can heal your body with food. That's the thing. And that's what I'm researching into so much more. I'm finding it so interesting. So I will be sharing my points. So let me know if you think maybe you do have it and we can talk about your symptoms. Let me know if you think you've got PCOS. I've had girls message me on Instagram and on my WhatsApp like, oh my God, I didn't know you were going through this. Like, same here. You know, I'm here to talk and here to open up this subject. Can you see my puffy face? I woke up with a headache that turned to a migraine. I've never struggled with headaches and migraines like I mentioned before, but I'm guessing because it's all very hormonal related. <laughs> oh, hello. I can't function with a migraine. Well, nobody really can. I, I'm not a headache girl. I'm a tummy ache girl and I can function with a tummy ache. What do you want? Nauseous also this morning. I haven't felt nauseous this whole time. I loaded the Audible book, Beyond the Pill by Jolene Brighton. Apparently it's amazing. And see if that helps me throughout this time. But I woke up and there's no period. The best day ever. I'm taking care of these two. got up went away with my mom which was absolutely lovely but I just wanted to say from yesterday I started to feel less bloated but then I ate foods and I'm going to explain this in next week's vlog I ate some certain foods that obviously weren't what I had planned in my mind for my diet so didn't coincide with that but it's life it's gonna happen this morning we got up we went paddle boarding at 7 a.m which was absolutely lovely it sets me in a really good mood for the rest of the day I just feel really good a really good high energy i have no pain for the first time i feel like it's a good start everything seems to have balanced out a bit even though i was eating not insanely bad but i wasn't eating the best of food Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up here. I just wanna say thank you again for watching the second vlog. I'm not very good at this bit. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really love all the messages that everyone's been sending me. I really, really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, click the like button, and please leave me a lovely comment. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.